seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Coming back from this injury has been the most humbling experience to date. I mean, here's what happened. Like, this happened back in April. April? May? I think it was April. And, uh... I tried to do a long run, and then I raced the Nike Go 10K in LA. And then I uh, ran stairs at November Project West LA. And that whole time I remember being like, this is bad. And then that's where we could, like pulled the plug on marathon training, and that's where my break started. And then I took a couple weeks off of complete rest, only doing like spinning, and strength work at home. And when the time came, uh, five, four, six weeks ago, my PT, Rachel, she told me to start again. And I started with one mile <laughs> every other day. I did that for a week. And then I went to two miles every other day for a week. And then I went to three miles every other day for a week and then four miles every other day for a week and then five miles every other day for a week and then it was time to start marathon training <laughs> and normally when I like the last two times I've started three times even that first try at BQ or bus like I went into it in pretty good shape physically like I want to puke and, then and I also kind of want to cry but this time around my base is pretty like we're building a house on like sand <laughs> That's not true, but that's how it feels. You know, like I am so afraid, terrified, just terrified. Mostly because in the summertime, like when it's humid and hot out, you're already moving pretty, like a little bit slower than normal. So I'm, I keep focusing on my speed, which I know I shouldn't be doing. It's strong, not fast, but it's hard not to look at those numbers and think how the hell am I going to run 26.2 miles in three hours and 35 minutes when I'm doing this right now, barely. And then uh, the first week of marathon training started and Rachel, she took, she came at me with, <laughs> she came at my training plan with a pen and just like changed everything. No speed work for the first four weeks. Here, I'll just let you watch. Here's the thing with speed work. It has a tendency to like undo everything we've done. Yeah, yes. <laughs> um, maybe we, I mean, the speed is important too, especially if you're trying, what's your goal? 3.30, five, 3.35. Can we, let's compromise in on this. I am just listening to you. There's no me advocating for anything. <laughs> let's hold off on the speed for a couple of weeks. Okay. I would rather you be okay with like starting to put like, bulk up. Yeah, and I would definitely do more like along that line. Alter G. What if I do my Alter G miles at marathon pace? Yeah. It's fast in do terms that. of a marathon. Yeah. But like yeah, yeah, yeah. Compromise. That's what this whole thing is gonna be. <laughs> like I was just like, I'll let you tell me what to do. <laughs> but I'm actually gonna tell you that this is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> How many miles is that for the whole week? Five, ten. It's like twenty one. The bare minimum. <laughs> Clean slate, feeling good, not doing as much running, adding in more strength and cross training. Yeah. Making sure you're breathing. Yeah. Yeah, no speed work for the first four weeks. I'm doing a lot of swimming. I'm uh, hitting up the Alter G at finish line. It's just very different. Like, I love speed work. Like, I've grown, that part of my training has become my favorite part of training just because you get walking breaks. <laughs> no, that's not really why. I think I love it the most because it is the, the, the time that I truly get to target that voice that tells me you can't. And not really being able to do that, not really building that strength in the beginning is so scary. <laughs> I just miss it so much. But... You gotta do what you gotta do. You can't get ahead of yourself. You, ha I mean, for me, like the name of the game, it's like, I, I asked Rachel if she thought I would uh, BQ. Do you think I can BQ? I think so. <sighs> I think you have a really good shot. I just, and you have to not get injured. I know. That's all hedging on that. But I think like mentally, you're more there than you were before because now you know how close you've been. 
I yeah. think it's going to depend physically. And also, and this is a big, like, difference, I think, work is a way harder course. Why would you say that? I'm just being realistic here. <laughs> it's hard for me not to want to go out and run track workouts and tempo runs and... <sighs> push myself as hard as I can, but we're two weeks closer to doing that and hoping and praying for best case scenario. Yeah, but this is a lot of talking and I totally dropped the ball on connecting this clip to the rest of this episode. <laughs> so yeah, week one, check. Here's week, here's just not here is week two, but here's some highlights of week two. Most importantly, one of the struggliest runs I've had yet. <laughs> Thursday, July 22nd. Today I have a four mile run and a swim. So I am running to the pool. Let go. Swim is done. I am just such a terrible swimmer. Well, that's not true. I'm actually a pretty okay swimmer. But breathing, I panic. It's very annoying. All right, let's get home before it pours. I only have a half mile to go, and I'm dying. Oh, this is so humbling. It will get easier. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Oh, man. Hot, 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 soupy, soupy run. Oh God. I want, I had to sit down and do this real quick before I hopped in the shower. I'm like dying to get in the shower because like, look at me, I'm just like, like this is sweat. All of it is sweat. This is my favorite slash least favorite part about marathon training uh, is watching like times from today and then comparing them to what's gonna happen in like four weeks, eight weeks race day you know like today like I was firing off like at 9 30 to 10 30 minute miles like I felt like I was swimming I it was so hot so muggy it's probably like 100% humidity out right now and it's probably it's 83 degrees and uh I have dead legs I did six miles on the ultra g at 750 pace yesterday at 75% body weight so my legs are dead I'm tired it's uh instinct in me to try to do too much and Rachel my PT who you've seen has been very very strict with my training plan making sure that I don't do too much because I'm still coming back from this injury and the the key that we're going after right now is getting through these first four weeks really getting strong focusing on my diet uh just putting putting every single egg in the right basket making sure that we're setting me up for success and today is an example of why this little like voice that says like you can do more you can do more you can do more like you have to say no you know sometimes just not giving up and not doing too much at the same time like that's the win all right that's all i'm gonna go shower because i'm so gross and then i'm gonna make a smoothie Waking up at 5.45 is not that hard when you go to bed at 8.30 on a Friday. Because <laughs> this is my life now. I go to bed really early. All right. It's, uh, it's Saturday, July 28th. Uh, long run. Number two. Today, I think I have 9 to 10, depending on how I feel. So let's go get some coffee and get in my air pants. anything yesterday after the run because I was actually kind of freaked out <laughs> the run was great it was actually kind of uh, 
sobering because we ran over the Queensboro Bridge, which the Queensboro Bridge is the bridge that you run over from Brooklyn to Manhattan during the New York City Marathon. And they call it like the wall of sound where you come off the bridge and it's like totally silent. And then it's just like <laughs> the most insane amount of energy with like spectators, eight people deep cheering for you and pulling for you. And uh, the last time I was on the New York City Last time I ran the New York City Marathon and last time I was on that bridge, I was by myself. I was doing the Foot Locker 5 Burrow Challenge, and part of that is that you take off an hour before everyone else. So we ran most of the course, the five of us, and then at the 13-mile mark, everyone, at the, it's the Ed Koch Bridge. Uh, everyone, is it the Ed Koch? I don't know. There's like a little bridge that takes you into Queens. But... Uh, the five of you take off and race and like at first I was like I'm gonna race and then I took off and I was like no I'm not my hip is bad like this is bad I just run Chicago a month earlier and uh yeah I was all by myself by the time I got on the Queensboro Bridge which was so weird because normally when you run the Queensboro Bridge it's pretty quiet it's one of the most quiet parts of the race like normally the bridges are because there aren't spectators and you just hear the thousands of foot uh footfalls you know like running you, you hear the thousands of runners but not a lot of talking not a lot of voices a lot of heavy breathing and i was by myself like there was no one else on that bridge pulaski bridge there's no one with me this is the weirdest eeriest new york city marathon ever and it was so weird and it, it was a moment of like i have 10 more miles ahead of me i'm not gonna win this hurts i want to quit and that was a hard moment for me because the new york city marathon holds such like a special place in my heart and to have such a bad day really sucked so to run over that bridge like i couldn't stop thinking about like real like the new york city marathon was kind of the beginning of all my problems injury wise so i just kept thinking about it and like what's happened in the last year and a half and just I'm just frustrated. I'm over being hurt. I'm over worrying about being hurt. I miss not knowing what this is like, if that makes any sense. I'm hoping for the best. Things are going okay. The, the hard part was the rest of my day yesterday was painful. The run itself was not, like I didn't hurt during it. It was a hard run. I struggled and my face is bright red in pictures, but like, <sighs> The rest of the day I had that pain come back and that was a little, I mean, even admitting that to you right now, like I went back and forth about whether or not I should talk about it because a part of me doesn't want to talk about it because I do think it's going to get better because I went and saw eighth grade, the movie, and then I came home and got in my, my air pants and then I did my hip ones and then I really stretched, went to bed really early, got 11 hours of sleep, ate really well, woke up, did my strength work and just stretched the hell out of it got back in my ear pants and it feels fine today which is remarkable but week three begins and this week there's a race I'm going to Maine to run a 10k with Nike so project moonshot <sighs> here we go uh.